Hello, everybody at the 10 Minute Book Talk. Catherine Ray here. And this is where you find 10 short, sweet minutes of great book discussions each Wednesday. I am joined by my co hosts, Rachel Linden and Marie Bostwick. And today we have the honor of interviewing um, Iman Hariri Kia and her novel, which has this fabulous cover, and she can tell you all about it A Hundred Other Girls. So it is always best when the author tells us about the story. So Iman, what is A Hundred Other Girls about? Thank you guys so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. A um, Hundred Other Girls, which is my debut novel, follows our protagonist, Nora, who is a Middle Eastern American post-grad who is a little bit lost. She's an aspiring writer, but she's currently crashing on her older sister's couch while tutoring rich Upper East Side kids who don't care very much about her. Um, but then the opportunity of a lifetime comes across her lap, the chance to work at her favorite culture magazine, Vinyl. And the pages of Vinyl basically raise Nora. Like they taught her everything from how to insert a tampon to who to vote for. So when she gets there, she thinks that this is going to be her lucky break, but she quickly realizes that all is not as it appears as a reader. The old school elitist print team and the new school woke, but for the wrong reasons, digital team are in a full blown cultural turf war with each other and she gets caught in the middle. So as each side tries to get her to join them, she'll have to either pick one or form her own. So I really like to describe this book as like a true coming of age story for women in their early 20s. But I also think that you will relate to the sisterhood inside of it, the first job anxiety. Um, there's a really wonderful workplace romance. It really explores the decline of the publishing industry and the rise of digital media. Um, but the, the perfect one liner for it is an update on the world of the Devil Wears Prada but set in 2023 and told through the perspective of the marginalized people who really make the industry what it is. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that, I mean, like I could think of about 15 people I want to send this to right now. Oh, yeah. My daughters-in-law would think yeah. it was so cool if I sent them this book. I think I they would. would. <laughs> oh yeah. All, all the points. Okay. So uh, we know that you are in New York and that you have been working in the publishing industry and the media industry. And so what was it like to synthesize your own experiences and, and then write your first novel? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Of course. Um, this idea was really percolating in my brain for probably five or six years before I actually sat down to write something, but I really drew inspiration from every job I've worked in the industry, from that entry-level unpaid intern assistant to the top-level editor who has kind of an idea of what's happening behind the curtain. Um, and I also drew inspiration from industry gossip, news stories that broke, the anecdotes from my friends and coworkers. And it was really cathartic. I, I really, really enjoyed um, processing experiences that I've had, but also perhaps, um, I don't know, things that I haven't had the opportunity to really think critically about because I didn't have enough distance to see them as they were while they were happening. Um, and additionally, it was really special to work on something that I owned creative control of 100% because um, I was writing this book while working full time in an editorial job. And uh, it was a really, it was new for me to be able to own my work and not necessarily have to think, oh, I have to check with my boss, my manager, my company, my brand, um, and make sure that this aligns with their vision. That was, um, it was liberating. So I, uh, I owe a lot to this book right here because it allowed me to really trust myself and my, my voice as a writer. Wow. Oh, that's fantastic. Wow. There's so much here. I just feel like there's, there's a lot here that people are going to love. Um, I, this is like now moving to the, I, I haven't had the joy of reading it yet, but it's going to move to the top of my TBR pile. Um, Thank you. But I, am curious, I think people really get excited about novels that explore kind of that, you know, the backroom look of publishing, because it is kind of a mysterious world. It is, 
I'm still mystified by it, I have to say. After 20 years, I'm constantly mystified. But I am curious, you know, you've been working in publishing, you have worked in publishing. Like, what was it like to look at the experience of publishing a book from the other side, from the authorial side? Were there things that surprised you? Oh my gosh, 100%. I feel like so much is gate kept from readers and aspiring authors um, before you sort of enter the industry and get to see all the nuances. I, I mean, there's so many different ways to answer this question, but um, the process of editing a manuscript, keeping it timely and fresh, having to constantly copy edit and sensitivity read something, um, it was really, really, um, I mean, it taught me to think way more critically about the literary choices I make as I sit down to write, because it's not only about entertainment, right? It's about seeing an object as sort of timeless and universal to um, a group of people so much larger than yourself. Um, I also feel like I learned a lot about diversity in publishing. Um, I obviously am a Middle Eastern woman writing from a Middle Eastern POV. Um, I wrote an own voices debut novel, but finding a way to make sure that my book although it's told from a lot of different diverse perspectives, was still considered like universal theme wise, making sure it related to all readers and appeal to a broader audience was um, both a challenge and a really rewarding learning curve. So I uh, learned a lot about that um, and I'm continuing to learn about that by connecting with other marginalized authors and becoming part of that community, um, social media marketing, book talk, Instagram. I feel like I really um, was humbled <laughs> by um, the young people that found the book and really elevated my voice and made sure that I knew that there was going to be an audience excited to read this because, you know, I, nobody knew who I was um, when I sort of sat down to tell people that I had finished you know, first draft of my manuscript. And I owe a lot to the readers who made me feel seen and supported. But I mean, I could go on and on, but patience, gosh, patience is a big one. Yeah. <laughs> I think that a lot, a, of, a lot of publishing is like waiting and- And then rushing. Yeah, and rushing. Hurry up and yeah, wait. It yeah. can be, you know, sometimes um, I feel like I've got months to tinker with something and other times I have a week's deadline to make a lot of different things work. Um, but um, gratitude is the number one word that always pops into my head. I have had this dream since I was a child. Um, I don't remember choosing to want to write. It's always just been subliminally part of who I am. And, um, you know, this is a moment that, I really, really don't think um, I can will ever take for granted and will never feel like something that, you know, is just earned um, or given. Uh, for me, it feels like a gift, a privilege, an honor, uh, and I really don't take the responsibility lightly. So I'm really grateful for the people who took a chance on the book, whether that be, you know, my editor and agent or the readers who have decided to read, review, and share about it. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, I'm going to ask you a question because um, this was an absolute delight and you you brought in so many different things. And and you're right, the, the different voices, you have such an authenticity with each one. So fabulous job, which leads me to what's next, because this is not a one. This is not from a one and done writer. So what what's next? Well, you're definitely right about that. I, um, as I said, this is my lifelong dream. And now that I'm here, I'm not giving it up without a fight. Give it up. <laughs> um, I've got a lot of really exciting news in the pipeline. I can't tell you too much, but you will be reading more for me. And what I will say is if you loved the uh, representation, humor, chaos, and subtle social commentary of this book, I am working on something that cranks all of that up to 100. Um, nice. Taking some risks, but also having a ton of fun. And I think that's going to hop off the page. So as soon as I can share more about that, I would really recommend people to connect with me on Instagram, subscribe to my newsletter, and you guys will be the first to know. Um, 
but I will say my, my one line teaser is I, I pitch this as killing Eve meets uh, inventing Anna. So uh, whoa, oh, that teaser. that's a hook. Wow. Um, but right. it's going to be in a word chaotic, chaotic <laughs> and amazing. <laughs> so. That is awesome. Mm. Love it. Love it. Well, before you leave us, Amon, I want to ask you one last question. We ask every author who comes on the show, what is bringing you joy today? Oh my gosh. Well, today I'm going to have to say it's my little sister. She recently moved to New York and I've had the biggest friend crush on her um, since she was born. I actually have her on my wall right here. And um, I haven't spent that much time with her in the new year, but she is going to be swinging it all the way to Brooklyn to my apartment and we're going to have a sister date and it is going to cleanse my palate and make me feel like I can think and see and feel clearly because she is the absolute best. <laughs> Yay! Oh, that's that is fabulous. That is fabulous. Shout out, Ava. I hope you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you get sister cred for that. <laughs> I know. She's going to be like, oh, that was so, you embarrassed me. I'm like, oh. <laughs> That's your job. It's your older sister to embarrass you. That's older yeah. sisters. That's, it is. That's your job. All right. Hold up your book one more time so readers can see it. And Amon, thank you so much for being here with us today. And thank you all for joining us again on a um, for another book talk, 10-minute book talk. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.